Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'll be showing two methods that I use to measure the flatness of uh, optical surfaces that I make in my little optical shop. The first is using interferometry, and this is probably the most basic form there is of interferometry. Um, and, uh, and this is using what we call test plates in conjunction with monochromatic light. And to do this, I've got some precision flaps and I use an inspection booth that, that I've made. Um, so I put this together previously and it's mounted to the, one of the benches, one of the worktops in my optical shop. And it's dual purpose. So it's got a monochromatic um, section at the top, which I use for measuring the flatness of the surfaces. And on the bottom, um, I use it for inspecting the surface quality. And um, so this method of, uh, of measuring with flats, um, we're, we're using Newton's rings or fringes to, to measure the flatness of the surface. And, and here's a picture of what those fringes could, might look like, uh, just an example. So that's the first. And then the second method is using a spherometer. So here's a picture of, of what my spherometer looks like. And I'll explain a bit more about this in a minute, but it's, it's actually used as a comparator. So I calibrate this gauge every time against a known flat. It has a single probe in the middle, which uh, measures relative to a plane that's that's um, defined by the three ball bearings on these on the spherometer ring. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the booth then. So the the lower section here, as I mentioned, is intended for inspecting the surface quality of optical surfaces. So we're really looking for things like scratches and digs or edge chips. And to do that effectively, you need to have a dark background with um, an illuminated foreground for transmission. If, if you're inspecting in transmission, then, um, then that's how you do that. You need the, the strip light at the front there that you can see. And um, so that's one method. And um, here's, a, here's a, a picture of the um, ISO standard, which defines that test. The other option is to measure it in reflection. So some materials do not reflect, sorry, do not transmit within the visible wave band, which means you can't see through it pretty much. But um, some of these materials do transmit in other wave bands, such as infrared. Um, so for that reason, you'd need to inspect the surface in, in reflection. And here's a screenshot of the, um, of the schematic from the ISO standard for that method. The upper section has a, a monochromatic uh, light source at the top there. So you'll see it's, it's orange in color and, um, and the, the color of that light or the wavelength of, of that light is 589 nanometers. And what that means is that light as it propagates through space at the speed of light, um, the spacing between the, the waves is the wavelength. And because we know the wavelength or the color of the light, that's the thing that enables us to define what a fringe is. And, um, and this really warrants a more in-depth uh, discussion on, on a separate video. Okay, so I brought you, brought you a bit closer so that we can see what's going on here. So we have these two test plates, which I've, I've um, previously cleaned the surfaces and placed them carefully into contact with each other. So I'll, I'll just tip them up so that hopefully the camera will, will see them. Um, so what you should be able to see is a series of light and dark bands going across the surface which move around. As I apply pre different pressure to my fingers and thumbs, um, what I'm able to do is influence um, actually the size and direction of the air gap between the two plates. And because, because there's an air gap, there's a, a difference in refractive index between the two parts and uh, that's where the interference occurs between uh, the two surfaces, which are very close to each other in terms of uh, accuracy. 
but you should be able to see some light and dark bands there. And what we've, what's going on here is um, constructive and destructive interference, and, and those dark bands are known as fringes or Newton's rings. And they, they've got that name because it was Isaac Newton who wrote about them in his book of optics. What we're doing here is comparing the two optical surfaces and one would normally represent the gauge and the other one would represent the workpiece that we're polishing to um, correct the flatness. And what we're looking for is um, is ideally for these these fringes to be dead straight. So the straighter they are, the flatter the the surface or, or the less the difference between the two surfaces. And so here we can see that they're not perfectly straight. And there's maybe, if you look at the spacing between the bands, the the straightness of the of the bands is probably equivalent to maybe a third of the spacing between the bands. And that's really that visual assessment is how it used to be done in the old days before having um, more modern digital equipment, which can analyze this more accurately than a, than a visual assessment can. Uh, this is how it was done. So the skilled optician would, would look at these fringes and would estimate um, what level of error is in that surface. And I would say that this method is probably reliable. There's probably about an uncertainty of about I don't know, 10 or 20 percent um, measurement uncertainty with this, because one person might look at it and say, oh, no, I disagree. It's slightly better or it's slightly worse. I'll put together another video which will explain the theory behind interference and, and, and how all of this works. But for now, um, that's that's what the fringes look like. And the, the best way to try and understand what the fringes are representing is map contours. So every time you see a contour on a map, um, that represents a change in altitude. And it's exactly the same principle here, except each fringe represents a change in air gap. So two, two of these fringes rep represents one wave. And, um, and one wave is equal to 589 nanometers. One fringe is half of that, which is... 295 nanometers and I'm saying that this method would be accurate to about a tenth or maybe 10 or 20 percent of that so if we if we go with say 10 percent uncertainty then that's about about 30 nanometers or 0.03 of a micron um, or one 345th of the thickness of a human hair so pretty damn small what we have here is a couple of different approaches to um, a spherometer, which is another method for measuring surface flatness. Um, with with this gauge, we can measure the radius of curvature, or we can measure how flat a flat surface is, or how flat a plano surface is. And um, so the, the first one that I'll mention is this one here. So this is like a handheld gauge, and it comprises of a ring here, and in this case, there are three balls which are bonded in with araldite, bonded into a little groove, a precision groove around this ring here. And the, the PCD of those three balls is known. And, um, and then in the middle is this ruby, trip, uh, ruby tipped probe here, which is attached to a dial gauge. And this particular one, this one resolves half a micron. Um, I have another one of these that resolves one micron. Um, but in principle, you could you could mount any kind of dial gauge. So if you wanted to, you could mount a dial gauge like this. Although this one resolves 10 microns. So obviously it wouldn't be as accurate as, as, uh, as this one here, which resolves half a micron. Um, the other kind of ring that can be used with a spherometer is, is this one. So this is... A full a full ring and um, and the lip of this ring has been highly polished and um, great care has to be taken with these kind of spherometer rings to make sure that there's no burrs or, or dings on here which 
could either um, mark the workpiece um, or and or uh, create a, a false measurement. So, so we we make sure that we take good care of, of both types of uh, of thermometer rings. The other type of thermometer that I've got here is is this one here. So this is a a Heidenhain probe, um, which is attached to this thermometer ring, and it's plugged into this DRO, and this DRO resolves one tenth of a micron. So we've got millimeters here, uh, tenth, hundredth of millimeters thousandth or a micron and then um, one tenth of a micron and the way this particular gauge well they're both calibrated in the same sort of way so what happens is under this cloth I've got a precision flat so this is about 200 millimeters in diameter um, it's made from fused silica and it's very flat it's about half a micron flatness across the whole Across the whole thing so the, the way I would calibrate this thermometer is I'd carefully place it down on two balls then down onto the probe contacts next and then lastly the third ball contacts so that's down and so what we've achieved is <clears throat> on that particular ring there we've we've defined a plane bet between these three balls so three points define a plane and we've defined that plane now and the probe is now aligned with that plane um, and then all we need to do now is we we enter zero into there or if we knew that for example this plate is uh, i said better than half a micron over the whole thing so that equates to about quarter of a micron over a ring of that size which is about half the size of that plate so if i wanted to i could i could maybe you know, type in 0 0.2 or something um, so that I've got exactly the right calibration on this gauge. So that's how it's calibrated. We'll just see how well that repeats. So it flickers around about 0 0.1 of a micron. Okay, so so that's that's a quick introduction to the spherometer. I'll just I'll put this cloth back over that test plate <coughs> or that reference flat, and I'll bring in one of the um, one of the test plates that I showed you a moment ago in the in the booth. I'll just uncover the, the DRO. And that's telling us that there's there's about um, a tenth of a micron difference between the the master plate and this test plate here, um, which stacks up pretty closely with what I was saying because um, there's there's about over that PCD there's about quarter of a micron or less, um, and I know that this test plate is pretty good. That's good to about a quarter of a fringe. A quarter of a fringe is about 70, 75 nanometers. Um, obviously, I can't resolve um, that low with this gauge, but it's round about, it's round about correct. Um, so, 0 0.1 of a, 0 0.1 of a micron. Um, obviously, 100 nanometers, and I'm saying that there's a difference of about 75 nanometers. So it's it's there or thereabouts. So there's pretty good correlation. So in conclusion, um, a, a spherometer like this one, or the other one I showed you um, over on the bench there, is generally what I would use when I'm checking the flatness of optical parts prior to polishing. So at this point, the surfaces are, are lapped. They're not um, they're not highly reflective. They have a diffuse uh, surface finish. At this point, the accuracy of of this gauging method is is adequate because. I'm at this stage. I'm a, I'm aiming to make the surface slightly concave by one to two microns. So if my measurement is accurate to say a tenth to half a micron, that's probably accurate enough at that stage. 
Um, and the reason for that is that I want the workpiece to, to make edge contact with the polisher so that I polish from the edge towards the centre, not the other way around, otherwise the cycle time is going to be really long um, and it's a really difficult process to control when it's when it's the wrong way around. Um, but this is, you know, another another subject really, and I'll, I'll cover this in another video. Um, and then I'll use the test plate for measuring polished surfaces because um, <clears throat> a part that isn't highly reflective, that is not polished like this, um, you don't get the specular reflection that you need. Um, specular reflection is what we see here, so a highly reflective surface as opposed to a ground or lapped surface, a bit like the edge appears there. Um, so, so this method obviously is more accurate, as I've mentioned. Um, the, the, this, um, this method compared to the stromata is much more accurate. So, the, so the, the stromata, like I said, is accurate to about a tenth to half a micron, depending on which type of stromata I use. Uh, test plates can be accurate to um, about 30 nanometers which is at least three times more accurate than the spherometer technique. Also, the, the test plate method, so here, here's another part here um, that I'll show. So you can see a lot more fringes on this one, and these, these fringes are round, and that's because we've got um, power, which the easiest way to think of power is that, is that the part is slightly domed. And, um, and what we're looking at, for here it is the roundness of the fringes as opposed to the straightness before we're looking for the roundness here now so if um, the fringes are oval or they're they're not round and they're irregularly shaped then um, then that's a method that we can use to interpret the shape of the surface and we can we can take some insights in terms of what might be going wrong with the polishing process but that kind of information you can't get from the spherometer because it, obviously it's just a single point relative to the plane that we've um, defined by those three balls. That's a little glimpse into the world of, of um, conventional or traditional methods for testing optical surfaces. And, and, and this, is, this is the method that I use in my little home shop. And... Um, and I'll, I'll cover some of the more in-depth subjects in, in separate videos. Um, but uh, in a nutshell, that, that's how I, how I measure the flatness of the parts that I make. Um, and um, an example of some of, the, some of the things I make are these, these little prisms here. So this is a, a 90, 45 degree prism. So the reason it's called that is that um, it has a, a 90 degree angle there and then it's 45 degrees here and here um, so the, these this is the typical of the of the kind of parts I, I make for various customers so we'll put that back on the tissue um, and I'll measure the flatness of of those surfaces um, during and after polishing uh, I also need to measure the angle of these surfaces relative to each other um, and I'll use an auto collimator for that but that's another that's another subject I'll I'll come back to that on uh, on another video but for now that's it for now and um, I hope it was of interest and uh, let me know if you if you want to know more optical shenanigans and I'll be happy to share it with you uh, so if you made it this far thanks for sticking around and thanks for watching thanks for the subs it, they're all appreciated and uh, i'll see you on the next one bye for now